Christmas. Left 4 Dead came out in 2008 and it was ahead of the curve. It had an AI director that could ramp up the difficulty of your missions as you're playing them on the fly. It can throw out lots of different uh, special infected, it can throw out hordes, and you didn't have anything like that at the time. And it had this emphasis on co-op. It was a fully co-op game that you could jump in and jump out whenever you felt like. And there, there was voice comms in the game, but you could still play the game with people that you didn't know without voice comms because the characters had barks giving away vital information. The, uh, the characters would call out special infected hunters, there's a tank, there's a smoker, there's a boomer. Um, uh, there's a witch. I think also they they would they would say things like uh, that that they found a med kit, they found pills, they f found ammunition, they found various types of uh, guns, and this all aided in creating teamwork, where otherwise there might not have been any. And then, yeah, they mixed it up. They made things a little more complicated in Left 4 Dead 2, where they started adding uh, different uh, ammuni ammunitions. So you had fire ammunition, explosive ammunition in the maps, defibrillators, uh, adrenaline shots. What else did they add? Oh, boomer juice. And things like that, so they mixed things up, added additional things, added melee. Um, but the main premise was the same, and it was this simple thing. Like, it wasn't overly simple, but it was simple enough that anyone could just jump into a game whenever they wanted to. And now Back for Blood has come out. And it feels like the people who made this, even though they're Tell Rock, these people have no, like, they have no idea what made Left 4 Dead so good, so accessible to everybody. And it was this immediate jumping into action that has kept Left 4 Dead going still, I feel. This pick up a play man mentality has aided it in its longevity, as well as the mods, as well as the workshop being able to create new maps all the time so there's always going to be new fresh content for it Back for Blood immediately differentiates himself by having classes and cards you need to unlock through playing so although there's eight classes you're, you're probably going to only have like a few of the people are going to choose. I mean, you've got Hoffman, who gives extra team ammo capacity. You keep running out of ammo, you're going to have Hoffman on your team to compensate. Uh, Evangelo has team movement speed. Everybody's going to have Evangelo on their team. Walker for the extra team health. Why wouldn't you have him? Mom for the team extra life. If you're struggling, you can bring Mom along. Left 4 Dead, yeah, you found laser sights and special ammo and, and kits along the way. But they were in the levels. They were just things you would grab. Or they'd be free at the start of the level, grab a few things, head on out. Back for Blood, you need to purchase your kit. You need to find currency through the levels. And then spend them at the beginning of each mission. At each run. And at the end of 
the run, whether you live or die, is gone. You quit out, that currency's gone. And it really slows things down. And it creates a barrier for drop in, drop out action to the Left 4 Dead games have. Because you don't have that currency, you're not going to be able to buy medkits. You're not going to be able to buy ammunition for your guns before you head out the door. You'll be able to buy, um, like ammo uh, and, and mods for your guns. Because each, each gun now has different ammo types. So you got to hope that you pick up the right ammo through there where you got to throw away your gun. Which kind of flies in the face of being able to upgrade your gun. If you're spending money on upgrading your gun, you're not going to just throw it away because you can't find ammo anymore. Because you just spent all your ammo, uh, you spent all your currency on that gun. So you've got to make sure your entire team are using different fucking guns or you're going to fuck yourself. If you're all using the same fucking assault rifles, you're gonna, you're gonna just, you're just gonna absorb all that um, assault rifle ammo, and so they just have shotgun shells and pistol ammo and uh, sniper rifle ammo just laying around. No one's got a fucking gun to use it because they've fully upgraded their guns. So they don't want to give that shit up. And it's one of these things like you don't get to choose which character you like because of the buffs, the team buffs. You don't get to choose which um, guns you like because you're going to need to upgrade them and you're going to be able to need to find the ammo for them. Left for Dead, choose what you like. Back for Blood, choose what you've upgraded or choose what helps the team. You don't get to choose what you like. And Left for Dead had your characters naturally giving out bark saying pills over here. Um, we got medkits, we got ammo, there's a hunter. There's a boomer. Back for Blood kind of has this, but in a much more limited capacity. So instead, they've added in a ping system, so you get to, you get to ping it yourself instead. But unfortunately, it means the characters feel less alive because they're silent a lot more. Zombie destruction is superior in Left 4 Dead, a game that came out in 2008. I think the level design is superior in Left 4 Dead. Like, your goal is to survive through these levels as quickly as possible. Get in, get out. And I feel like Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 levels aid in that kind of linear experience of you just trying to rush through towards the end. Whereas, Back for Blood, I don't feel their levels are as well designed, honestly. You know, the uh, star of each map for Back for Blood, you have these corruption cards, which are kind of like mutations to the level, which can completely fuck you. You can get a bunch of special infected that are going to just fucking destroy your team if you're not like the best players in the world. You can get like different types of tour boys. That usually they're just going around and just hit you. They're really armored. Um, so you need to get their weak point. But there's different variations where they'll just grab you and do damage to you over time. They have a lot more health and you're just going to have to shoot them in the face as much as possible before they die. You've got special infected that if you shoot them, they will call out a horde. You've got exploders which are a bit like boomers that will... Which are a bit like boomers and spitters rolled into one. Because sometimes they have the mutation to spit. So they like create a pool of like acid toxic waste stuff. That does damage over time if you stand in it. Or it can be a um, boomer where it just run up and explode. Doing damage to you. And it has a mild version of calling a horde. And talking about all the special infected. They are, their sounds, their sounds aren't as prominent as in Left 4 Dead. So you can't hear it and instantly know what the enemy is. Um, also, because you've got different types of the same special infected, silhouette-wise, you can't instantly know what it is. Like, if you see a, uh, a boomer, 
You know that fucker is going to explode and cause a horde. By what it looks like. Um, and a spitter. You know what a spitter's gonna do. And you know what a hunter's gonna do just by looking at it. But a tall boy. Is he just gonna be really armored and just pound you into the ground? Or is it gonna grab you and do damage over time? It's not as clear. Visually it's just not as clear. The single player potential for Back for Blood uh, until they fix their bots doesn't exist. Um, so they don't actually have a single player mode but you can get into a match with just bots by the game not finding any players which you can do in the free to play beta at the moment. So that doesn't scream out for player potential. When it does actually launch. But yeah. So I got into there with just bots. And the bots are dumb as fuck. Um, and a lot of it is down to this currency system. Because they're not going to have med kits to heal you with. Or heal themselves with. Um, they also run out of ammo. And they won't change their weapon. They won't pick up ammo. Uh, so they will just run out of ammo. And just run around with us, you know, following you. Uh, being an actual detriment to you. You can get, uh, th there's a, there's an infected that will pin you down with some kind of webbing and you need to be meleeed out of it. It's a bit like a smoker, but it's a ranged smoker, so they'll just spit on you and you're incapacitated. And it does, it does a little bit of damage over time, not a huge amount, but you're incapacitated. And if you don't get meleeed out of it, you will just die. You'll just fall on the ground once your health runs out because there's no way for you to get out of it yourself. And the bots don't know how to get you out of it so they'll just crowd around you not doing anything, not even fighting other infected. They'll just be there taking damage from the zombies around them until you fall on the ground and then they'll res you. And there's a bunch of other things they'll do as well. They 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 just won't they just won't engage with special infected abilities. So there's a leaper that will get you down on ground, which is a bit like a hunter. Uh, no sleeper, it's called. Sorry, sleeper, which is an infected that's a bit like a xenomorph, where it's attached to a wall. And so it won't attack you until you come too close to it. They can die in like two shots. From really far away. They're, they're terrible. Infected basically. Um, unless they somehow surprise you. But they're really fucking noisy. They're the only infected that are noisy. And they're supposed to be the stealth ones. Which is weird. Um, but yeah they'll jump on you. And there's no way to get out. Unless somebody helps you. And the boss won't help you. The multiplayer is terrible. And it's a really bad pale imitation of the ones from uh, Left 4 Dead 2. Left 4 Dead 2 multiplayer versus you go through campaign maps and all the special infected are players trying to stop you. And it's a time thing. Can they stop you? And if they do stop you, how long did it take them to stop you? And then you swap sides. And then they've got to try and stop you quicker than the other times. And it's really fun. And right now, in 2021, you can play both the main campaigns and the multiplayer versus with instant fucking queues. Sign up, get a game immediately. And it's still so much fun. It's so much fun to play still. Back for Blood. I don't think the campaign is as fun, honestly. And I think the mutations feel unfair. A lot of the time. And with lack of silhouettes, it feels like you're not getting enough information. And the multiplayer is this weird... Weird Battle Royale horde mode. Where... 
you go through these phases in these waves and survivors are going to try and survive the waves as long as possible and every time a wave ends the area shrinks with a uh, an area outside of it yeah, if you're outside of it you die so the map just gets smaller and smaller and I think it's like 4v4 and it's just bad honestly it's, it's it's just not fun and I don't understand how you're being a spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead games and you decide this is your multiplayer. It's inadequate. Like it needs a complete rework. The multiplayer needs a rework. The bots need a rework. So Back for Blood is a game that will hit the nostalgia of playing Left 4 Dead will quickly feel like a power imitation with less features, worse AI and changes that create a barrier to quick jump in action that Left 4 Dead games are famous for. So honestly, just go play Left 4 Dead 2. It still has a player base, has lots of mods, has custom maps and is far has a far superior versus mode. Like there's no reason to play Back for Blood. And I guess you just want a visual upgrade. I guess. 